Hello everyone, you are watching the YouTube st station identification of one of the best Massachusetts resident YouTubers. I am the dude with the Coney Do. I am Mr. Eric Liam. I am over here. You are watching WEML TV channel 77 episode number 47. What's going on everybody? Um, as you know, there is a big humongous winter storm that is supposed to happen tomorrow. We don't... Everybody's predicting one thing, you know. And sometimes things turn to blockbusters. Sometimes those storms turn to duds. We'll find out. Because they, they're predicting 5 to 9 inches in this region at least. I may have to go into work tomorrow. Um, even though it's my day off. Which, you know. But the best um, the best case scenario about that is I don't have to worry about bringing a change of clothes. Because technically tomorrow is my day off. So I'll be working off-duty clothes. And not only that, with my schedule change next week. I can, after working, you know. And it's supposed to start around 9 o'clock. So it's almost, it's almost an 11 hour storm. So it's got to be. Gonna be a long one, of course. If we get five, you know, from low as five to as high as nine, so we'll probably be in between as usual, six, seven, and eight inches. Which um, I don't know, but they have not called me yet, so I'm sure I'll be expecting a phone call later on tonight. Find out for sure what in the world is gonna happen. So, uh, but then, and then the crazier part is that tomorrow is Super Bowl Sunday, so I think this is gonna be. Um, I really don't know if a lot of people will be out. And about as far as you know, because we're still in the middle of pandemic, and there can be nobody, um, no guests more than fifteen, and no more than ten guests in a home. Um, I know a lot of people will probably do some supermarket shopping before that, so who knows for sure? So, uh, and plus, I think the mall is going to try is trying to save some money as well. So I don't know if they're going to call me at all, uh, due to the fact that um, because you know I think uh, another. I think in my in my in my opinion, um, this is just my opinion. It's my opinion only. Yeah, I think the main key for the mall to save money is not have guy, not have our our guys come in on their days off because you force the mall to pay extra money for that. So it's something that you know, it's just my opinion only. Um, it's 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 really crazy to say the least. But enough of that. We'll find out tomorrow. I'll find out. Well, or not, you know, like I said, it's will start early in the morning. The, I think the, it really intensifies during the afternoon, though. That's a huge thing. But the upside of that is the mall closes at 6. So, so that's something to um, work on. So, I'm hoping and I'm praying that, you know, people will get, I'm praying that, that God will protect me on, if I, if I drive on the way home, God will, the Lord will protect me if I have to go in tomorrow. So, that's another thing too. They've handled six inches without me when I was sitting out waiting for my uh, COVID results to come in back in December a couple of months ago. So, uh, but here's the upside. Today's the sixth of February. We have 22 days left. We have 41 days of winter left. So, what will happen? Meteorolo the cool thing about meteorologists is they don't get any, they don't get a whole lot of things right. Sometimes they're they're 80 percent accurate. Sometimes they're 20 percent not. So, or I can say 75 75 25. Oh, uh, seventy-five percent accurate. Sometimes twenty-five percent not. So it's, you know, iffy, iffy there and everything else. So we're gonna um, do this, and I'm just gonna be, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this right, okay? So let's get right into the heart of the video for today. I'm not talking about the weather or work or anything else. Uh, let's talk about uh, the Rumble Fallout this week. That's right, the WWE Roundup for from February first uh, to February. Fifth, that's right. It is the roundup: Raw, SmackDown, NXT, NXT UK, Two Hundred Five Live. You know the drill. And I'm trying to, you know, like I said, because of uh, of my job during the winter time, it's very difficult for me to have a lot of free time. You know, because you never know. Because this uh, Mother Nature really, really hates New England. Anyways, uh, let's get right to it. Um, Drew McIntyre arrives on the scene, and he and he addresses um, Edgewin the. Uh, the Royal Rumble, Edge arrives on the scene, the Edge goes, what's wrong with you, and all this good stuff, but he says, you better get out of your, um, get up your game. Sheamus interrupts Edge and Drew, and then all of a sudden, after talking to Edge and Drew, about, and then he bro kicks Drew McIntyre, right in the face, and Sheamus has this cold-hearted look, and he wants to be the WWE Champion, so I'm not surprised that Sheamus would do that, and Keith Lee was right all along. Uh, Charlie Caruso interviews Sheamus about that. Um, 
Sheamus says, yeah, I want to be WWE champion. Friendship goes out the window. Then the United States title, um, <clears throat> uh, what happened was the first one of the card, uh, the first of two championships, uh, Lashley defends against Riddle. Um, Riddle won by DQ because Lashley just snapped. <clears throat> so, Lash Riddle does pick up the victory, but not the championship. Lashley attacks Riddle post match. Bad Bunny arrives at the Thunderdome and to be on Miz TV. So, you very interested to see what happens there. <clears throat> While that's going on, the referees and the, you know, the online uh, ringside, ringside doctor attending to Matt Riddle. Orton addresses Edge after Edge won the Royal Rumble. And in fact, Edge was uh, faced Orton in a matchup t uh, that night on Monday Night Raw. New Day was talking about how, you know, dealing with Mustafa Ali. And Xavier Woods went up against Ali. And, and Xavier Woods picked up the victory over the Retribution leader. And now he says he wants reckoning one on one. This is going to be very interesting. To say the least, um, Bad Bunny was seen backstage with Damian Priest talking, and uh, so so Miz TV uh, came out. Bad well, Miz TV, uh, Miz and Morrison, they want to you know pitch their ideas to Bad Bunny, collaborate with him. Bad Bunny, and they tried singing, and Bad Bunny says, "Uh uh, but I got a friend that I want to introduce you to." And then Damian Priest comes out. Uh, Pre then Priest came in, punched, punched Miz in the face. They had a matchup, and the cool part about it is Damian one-on-one, uh, -on -one, it was a great matchup until John Morrison tried to distract the referee, and then Miz went to go grab his money in the bank briefcase. Bad Bunny took the briefcase, and started taunting him with it, and then John Morrison, you can put the briefcase down and all that. Bad Bunny had the microphone, punched Morrison in the face, knocking him out. Damian Priest hits the reckoning, one, two, three. Damian Priest picks up a huge victory over the Miz on Monday Night Raw in his debut match. How do you like that one? The Raw Tag Team Titles on the line the Lucha House Party to challenge the Hurt Business. Um, Lucha House Party, you know, Lucha House Party couldn't have a humongous target on their backs if they won the Tag Team Titles and brought them over to NXT for the Dusty Cup. But that wasn't the case. The Hurt Business did win their matchup, beside the fact that Cedric Alexander is being, getting too big for his britches. And that's irking the other members of the, uh, you know of the Hurt Business, but Hurt Business get, get, kept it together and ended up winning the gold. Sarah Schreiber interviewed Charlotte and Asuka about what's been going on, and they said they're determined to get back those tag team titles. In a, in a, but the triple threat, the, um, the winner of the match will face um, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler for the gold. It was Charlotte and Asuka, um, Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose, and Naomi and Lana who mi both make their return. And Naomi and Lana won the go. Their friendship goes way back, so I am so happy for Naomi and Lana. But meanwhile, during the matchup, look for, look for Lacey Evans arrives and prompted Charlotte just to get up and walk away from the match. Oscar wants to know what's up. Charlotte Caruso interviewed Drew McIntyre. McIntyre says, "If this is if this is what you want over a friendship, then you got yourself a title match." So I wouldn't be surprised that match will happen in the Elimination Chamber. Sheamus and McIntyre that'll be a heck of a matchup. Elias and Jackson Riker. I went up against uh, Jeff Hardy and the returning Carlito uh, in that matchup. And uh, and Hardy and Carlito picked up the victory. Maybe there's a new team being formed. You're talking about two gentlemen who have been uh, around with the, Ed, uh, with the uh, you know, around with the Ruthless Aggression era. They fought over the Intercontinental title at one point. And seeing Carlito back up... Uh, Carlito back. It's pretty cool, and he looks good. He looks very jacked. And they say they're going to try him out as a producer as well to help out with the younger talent, which is really, really cool. You see you see that kind of talent. Edge and uh, Carlito are trying are being tried out as producers of the show as well, so that could be a humongous thing for them. And uh, seeing former wrestlers, uh, seeing wrestlers of veteran status, you know, getting in um, front of a producer role and all that, that could really help the younger talent here in the WWE. And that could be beneficial to them. Edge addresses Randy Orton, and uh, and so tonight he says he's going to beat Randy Orton. Then Alexa Bliss went one-on-one -on -one with her former uh, friend and tag team championship partner Nikki Cross, which Bliss took up the victory. Alexa Bliss did a hopscotch, like, elbow leg drop type deal. I don't know what in the world's going on there. 
And Edge is about to head to the ring to face Orton and sees Damian Priest, shakes his hand. He said, hey, great job out there. We need more guys like you. You know, imagine getting an endorsement from Kane and Edge. Damian Priest is going to be a major player. Even though he's only 38 years old, they see him as a young kid, you know, in the WWE. Still, and just amazing. You know, the man is a former Ring of Honor television champion as Punishment Martinez. So, I think Damian Priest, you're going to see a lot more. And I have to agree with Edge and Kane. You're going to see a lot more of Damian Priest, man. And I'll tell you one thing. I would not be surprised if Damian Priest steps up to become the next United States Heavyweight Champion. I could see that happening. Um, Edge went one-on-one -on -one with Randy Orton. That was a heck of a matchup until Alexa Bliss appears. And Black Ink was coming oozing from their mouth. And I thought to myself, how does Ryan Cabrera sleep at night with this woman? And I just... How's he sleep at night? Poor guy. I feel bad for Ryan Cabrera. But, uh, I, I cracked. Uh, I was like, I feel bad for Ryan Cabrera. But he, but he probably knows and understands. So Ryan Cabrera's a big, w, probably a big WWE fan. And his friend Sam is. So he's like, you know, no big deal. He's engaged this woman. And sometimes, you know, I, I, can, I can imagine if Gorilla Monsoon, Bobby the Brain, he was still alive. Monsoon, got a question for you. What's that, Brain? How does Ryan Cabrera sleep at night knowing he's engaged to that? I don't know about that, Brain. <laughs> you know, I can imagine Ryan Cabrera goes, Oh, Gorilla Monsoon, he didn't mention me. How cool. No, uh, speaking of uh, Brian Cabrera and Alexa Bliss, as you know, there is, um, I think I addressed this um, earlier. I don't think I did. There is a um, an internet stalker, so to speak, a stalker troll by the name of uh, Albert, Albert Little 666, which uh, he's on Twitter and he's stalking Alexa Bliss and Ryan Cabrera and still and claims that Alexa Bliss is his wife and everything else. The guy's got a little screw loose. Please report and block the, unblock that individual if you if you can um, on behalf of Alexa Bliss and Ryan Cabrera because he, he report his tweets because I'll tell you what it you know people get too far with these obsessions with with their favorite superstars. I mean I'm, I I I'm a fan of a lot of superstars but I always respected the talent. That's the that's the main thing is, I think the main key word is respect. You gotta respect the talent. You know what I mean? You gotta respect the talent, and um, that's what I try to do every single day. It's something that, um, you know, I don't want to be like, oh, I'm obsessed with that person, and all that. I don't, you know, listen. I don't have my room is not filled with uh, posters and pictures of one individual per se. So because it, uh, I'm. You know, I'm old enough to know, so I'm old enough to know better back. So if you're on, Tw if you're a wrestling fan, you're on Twitter, and you see that Albert Little account, please report the account and block the person. That way, they won't come after you and everything else. Because guy's a little screw loose. You know, he wants Ryan Gabrera out of the picture. He wants Alexa Bliss to be his wife, and yeah, people just don't think. People just do not think at all. Um. All right, NXT. We're going to NXT February third. Uh, women's Dusty Cup semifinals. Um, it was Dakota Kai and and Randa, um, Raquel Gonzalez versus Casey Catanzaro and Kanan Cutter. Uh, Dakota Kai and, and Raquel Gonzalez did pick up the victory, so that means they're one half of the semi of the final team. And whoever wins between the Ways, Candice Ray and Indy Hartwell and Shanti Blackheart and Ember Moon will face the team of Dakota Kai and, and Raquel Gonzalez in the Women's Dusty Cup final final tournament and at uh, Vengeance, NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day. So that match is happening. Alicia Ashton, um, don't know why she, uh, she was there. I don't know what happened to Mackenzie Mitchell. Hopefully she's okay. Uh, Alicia Ashton interviewed Tony Storm. Tony Storm says that, you know, she wants to be the NXT Women's Champion. And she says that Io Shirai's been unstoppable. Except for one person, and that would be Tony Storm, because Tony Storm did defeat Io Shirai in the, in the tournament finals of the May Young Classic in 2018. Edge happened to arrive at the NXT um, um, CWC Capital Wrestling Center, and Edge and William Ringle were talking about their rivalry. I don't know what they were talking about. Leon Ruff went one on one with Austin Theory, and Austin Theory hit Leon Ruff with the ATL after a good hard fight matchup. To. Uh, Despite the fact that Lee and Ruff pulled Eddie Guerrero trying to get Johnny Gargano ejected to the back and everything else, and uh, they, and Gargano was down and hurt by Leon Ruff, I think. Then um, 
and then Leo and, and then Ray and Hartwell try to help Gargano, but then Shotzi and Ember attack them. And then the post match attack by Theory on Ruff until Dex Loomers came to the aid and attacked Theory. And then Santos Escobar and LD uh, and Les why um rest of Legal Ventel Fantasma promo for tonight against Lucha House Party. How uh, they're gonna beat them and then I think uh, and they made a joke about the end is near, so they're mocking carrying cross after being disrespectful toward, uh, towards carrying cross. Um Tiancha. Tiancha is the uh, young uh, is the ominous figure sitting down watching Zia Lee and Boa fight, mostly Zia Lee. And it comes a story about how a, 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 a grandmaster and his two children. Uh, mm. Um, excuse me. Okay, a grandmaster and his, and his two children were there. They were ruling um, a land, and then the, the son got corrupted by greed, killed the father, and then. The daughter was exiled. Saw a dragon. Um, wants the dragon, the teacher, how to conquer, and then it says it will cost her her soul, and all that. She came back. She won, and then she became what she despised, and now she's known as Tiansha. So, everybody's saying Karen Q is Tiansha. So this is going to be a very interesting uh, trio: Tiansha, Zaylee, and Boa. So that those, I see. I see them do a lot of a lot of things. Mind games, maybe. Chinese mythology. All right. Um, the net, the men's Dusty Cup quarterfinal, an interesting matchup. Um, Lucha House Party, who, who uh, two days, uh, two days prior to this was uh, going for the tag team titles against the Hurt Business and Legado Val Fantasma, and uh, Lucha House Party was pretty banged up a little bit, and Legado, uh, that'd be Joaquin Wild and Ro Mendoza took advantage of that, and they won the matchup, and they face. Um, MSK in the semifinals, so I say that's going to be an interesting match, to say the least. And uh, MSK arrived, saying they'll beat on, they'll beat Legato to advance to the final round of the Dusty Cup. So that's going to be an interesting matchup next. Uh, very interesting matchup, to say the least. Um, Pete Dunn, Oni Larkin, and Danny Birch arrive at the Capital Wrestling Center. They come to the ring. They call out Balor. Balor shows up, and accepts Dunn's challenge, and that match will happen at. Uh, NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day, uh, February the 14th. And uh, Edge shows up making his NXT TV debut. Edge explains why he's in NXT. He's watching the younger talent. He says he wants to watch this match matchup. He says he's never held the NXT title. But he will be watching the matchup. So I'm going, hello. Edge going for the NXT Championship is an opportunity for somebody in NXT to appear at a WrestleMania. So this is going to be awesome. And then Alicia Asher interviews Johnny Gargano about how NXT um, TakeOver Vengeance Day. Gargano will defend the North American title against Kushida. He gets upset about it. He wants Alicia Ashton fired. Knocks on Regal's door. Kushida does answer the Regal's door. He says, Regal's busy. The two were brawling. And, uh, well, Jesse Kamea went on one-on-one -on -one with Tony, went one -on -one with Tony Storm. And then, uh, during the matchup, I was, uh, during the matchup, Mercedes Martinez showed up and attacked, uh, and attacked Jesse Kamea, causing Storm to be disqualified. I'm going to write that now. And then, Io Shrike gets involved, and while the two ladies were brawling, Io Shrike's on top of turn, like, I'm the queen of my throne. I am the woman. So, that's what, I love Io Shrike. And then, Io Shrike gets involved, and then Io Shrike's left standing, and she says, well, be remaining NXT Women's Champion. Chris Stallion cut a promo on Santos Escobar in another uh, matchup as um, the challenge him for the Cruiserweight title. Cameron Grimes to the moon. That's right, he's coming back next week after an injury. So it'll be look. Escobar and Stallion were happening, and Scarlett and Scarlett was looking on in the matchup, and then Escobar did win the matchup. Carrying Cross shows up, attacks. Uh, Wild and Mendoza looks looks at Karen, uh, looks at Santos Escobar and Karen Cross. I'm going to give you the gift of time. Give you some time. If I were you, Santos, I'd be very, very, very careful. Very, very careful. And then Edge was talking. Uh, Edge was interviewed by one of the uh, the camera uh, offline 
off-camera reporter saying, what about what your decision is going to make? Because I'm going to watch the matchup. And then Karrion Cross confronted Edge and said, you better make a good decision. You better make it on logic. Because I'll be walking out with the NXT title. And Edge warns Cross, you know, those are threats. That could inspire me to come back. You probably don't want that. I walked away. I'm like, Edge versus Karrion Cross. That would be a very interesting match. I mean, Scarlett... And if Scarlett tries to get involved, I wouldn't be surprised if Beth Phoenix gets involved, takes off the headset, and starts decking people. You forget. You got a glamour's on. Anyways. So, and then the, mess, uh, the Dusty Cup Corner Finals, uh, Timothy Thatcher and Tommaso Ciampa going one-on-one. -on -one and going, in a matchup going against the Undisputed Errors, Adam Cole and, uh, And Roderick Strong. It was a hard fought battle, but Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher did pick up the victory. And they faced in the semifinals the grizzled young veterans. And then they confronted Thatcher and Ciampa. And then they both went at Those two teams went at it. So this is a great final four if you think about it, the Men's Dusty Cup. On one side of the bracket, you got grizzled young veterans versus Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher. And then on the other side, you got MSK versus. Legato del Fantasma, King Walking Wild, and Raul Mendoza. I sense this happening. All right, I sense this. I would imagine that the, uh, Thatcher and Chomp are going to win the whole thing. Imagine a fight, a brawl between Lorcan and Birch against Thatcher and Chomp for the tag team titles. Put, you know, throw the rule book out of the window. Put them in the fight pit. Let's get it done. I like to see that happen. All right, all right. NXT UK. Uh, that will be the next night, and uh, Zaya Brookside went one-on-one -on -one with Nina Samuels, and uh, Nina Samuels cheated by using a purse to knock out Zaya Brookside, defeat a handbag, to knock, knock out Zaya Brookside, pick up the victory. Sid Scala addressed the tag team title match, Jordan Devlin talks to Sid Scala, says, give me a challenge. Jack Stars interviewed, and then was interviewed about what happened with uh, Dragunov, then was interrupted by Scala to talk, and Scala was trying to ask anybody to challenge Jordan Devlin. Josh Morrell picked up a victory. Um, Josh Morrell went one on one with Joseph Connors. With Ginny at ringside, Joseph Connors did pick up the victory. Uh, Shaw Samuels had a little promo about what he's going to do in NXT UK East. So, no pinky, no party. Uh, Zaya Brookside tells Sid Scala she wants Nina Samuels in the rematch. Ilya Dragunov went one on one with Tyson T Bone. With Sam Gradwell, who likes to keep running his mouth. At ringside, until to the point where after the matchup, when Dragunov picked up the victory over Tyson Timbo, Dragunov decks him in the face. I'm like, Dragunov versus Gradwell would be a heck of a matchup. Sam Gradwell, you haven't watched NXT UK, you got to, because this, they have some great talent over there. Uh, Mako Satamora will arrive next week on NXT UK, actually, this coming Thursday. Yeah, Thursday, the 11th, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Danny Jones went on one-on-one with the Iron King. Joe Coffey, Coffey picks up the victory, grabs the microphone afterwards, addresses Rampage Brown. Rampage Brown, you know, comes to the rings at any time, anywhere, buddy. Rampage Brown, Joe Coffey, let's get at it. Uh, Gallus and Pretty Deadly cut a promo about their tag team title match. Eddie Dennis in a hunt. Um, in a street, and now next week in a street fight, the South Wales subculture of Mor Flash Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews will face the hunt in a street fight. In a street fight. Man, I'll tell you one thing right now. Eddie Dennis better, wa better, wa better know what he's doing, man. And then for Supernova Sessions next week, Shaw Samuels will be appearing uh, along with uh, the host, Noam Dar. Those two have a little history, especially during their ICW days. Jordan Devlin issued an open challenge. Who you got? While Dave Mastiff came out and he says, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, listen. Listen, I, n I want a cruiserweight, not a heavy, not 305, it's not 305 live. He says, yeah, um, he says, I know Captain Obvious, but I know you're keeping that warm for Trent Seven when he hits when he hits weight. And despite the size differential in poundage, in the end, Jordan Devlin uses smarts and wits to win the matchup. we got to get somehow Jordan Devlin to NXT US so he can face off against Escobar one of these days. That has to happen. That has <clears throat> has to happen for sure. It has to happen. All right. All right. Let's talk about SmackDown last night. Roman Reigns, Jay Uso, Paul Heyman arrived at the Thunderdome, 
And Roman Reigns is whining and complaining again, like a little girl, about Edge. So I want a, I want a decision by the end of the night. You're gonna get smacked around for that. And uh, and then uh, Dominic Mysterio went one on one with King Corbin, and Dominic and and his father Ray use a little Eddie Guerrero like tactics to defeat. King Corbin, which I am so happy about. And then Corbin ends up attacking the Mysterios. They attacked the Mysterios before the matchup. It happened. Caleb Braxton interviewed Big E about the, uh, the triple threat match for the Intercontinental title. And then the, for tonight against Sami Zayn and Apollo Crews. Daniel Bryant went one-on-one -on -one with Cesaro. Cesaro did pick up the victory. And uh, at, at the end, Cesaro and Daniel Bryant fist bump out of respect. Since K Nakamura was watching the matchup very closely. Tom, Kayla Braxton, love that Kayla, interviews uh, Bianca Belair about well her parents winning, uh, reacting for her winning the Royal Rumble, got to the point where you know, their antics got over with Corey Graves and Michael Cole, both of them laughing about it. It was really cool to see um, when your parents are proud of your little child doing big things in the big world, and which is totally cool and awesome. And then Bianca Belair says, I, I'll, I'll make my decision sooner. Bailey went one on one with Ro Ruby Riot, and Billy Kay on commentary gets involved in a matchup, which Bailey picks up the victory at. And I would not be surprised if Billy Kay aligns herself with Bailey. That could be a beneficial factor to both of them. We'll see what happens. Edge arrives in the arena, and then uh, Bianca Belair arrives in the ring to address WrestleMania. Reginald interrupts. Carmella comes in the rings, has her say. Sasha Banks interrupts Carmella. And Reginald has a few, a few things to say, so it'd be very interesting to see what Bianca Belair's decision is going to be. And uh, Braxton interviews uh, Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn complains and complains, complains. He said it'll be all over when I win the Intercontinental title. Otis and Chad Gable went one on one with Ziggler and, and Rude in a tag team matchup, and uh, and Rude and Ziggler did pick up the victory in the non-title matchup. Hulk Hogan addressed the situation with Andre the Giant. He was with Jimmy Hart. And, and he's addressing Edge about what his decision is going to be. So it'll be very interesting to see how that develops out. Big E, Sami Zayn, and Paul Cruz for the Intercontinental title on a triple threat. And um, Big E ends up retaining the title. Uh, Edge was checking and Shinsuke Nakamura backstage before he faced off against Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns says, what's your decision? Edge is about to make it, and then KO stuns Reigns. KO's not done with you yet. He's sick of you. Ever Rise rules. Anyways, speaking of Ever Rise, uh, 205 Live, uh, Tony Nese and Arya Davari in a tag match against Sunil Singh and Matt Martell, which um, nicknamed by... Because they uh, ever rise, and the Bollywood boys made a truce. So, you know, they're fellow Canadians, you know. So I think it's, that's really cool. So, and they're, uh, Nigel, Nigel McGinnis nicknamed them Bolly Rise. But despite that all, the whole deal, Nisan Tavari did pick up the victory. Jake Atlas uh, went one-on-one -on -one with August Gray. And August Gray did pick up the victory over Jake Atlas. And then Tavari and Nice decided that their night's not done. So they attacked... Uh, Jake Atlas and August Gray. Wouldn't be surprised Jake Atlas and August Gray. Hey, they attacked us. Let's team up and teach these idiots a lesson. So that is the WWE Roundup from February the 1st to February 5th. And that's it. So we'll see what happens. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. We, know we got a uh, Super Bowl. Uh, Tampa Bay. Kansas City. I don't know who we got. Who we got in there. But uh, a lot of things are happening. Uh, a big snowstorm is heading on the way. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to go in the work or not. I don't know how good it's going to... You know, here's the, here's the thing, you know... Ah, forget it. Yeah, I, I'm not going to say it because I'm, I don't want to be, be complaining. We'll see what happens. Um, I think it would be safe, it'd be safe to say that if they, hand, if they can handle six inches without of, uh, shoveling six, six inches of snow without me. Because, you know, all the Farland guys and everything else, you know, whatever. I'm not going to talk about it. Just I'll... I'll Leave, I'll, I'll see what's up, you know, I'll probably get a phone call from this and everything else um, about that situation. We'll see what happens, and uh, and like I say, worst, um, best case scenario for me is I don't have to worry about going in my uniform because I, I'm working five days a week, and, you know, we'll see what happens, and uh, I don't know. We got 41 days, we got 41 days of winter left, you know, and two weeks from today. Power Rangers Dino Fury will be premiering on Nickelodeon. I gotta make sure I set my alarm clock for that by waking up earlier than eight o'clock. I probably I probably did that already. 
but I was too busy goofing around on my phone, so I better remind myself. So, Power Rangers, Dino Fury, two weeks from today. I'm excited about it. We're getting rolling. All right. Um, that's all the time we have here for the W for episode number 47 of WEML TV channel 77. Later on, um, today is Saturday, so I'll probably try to come up with a Saturday Superstar K game of my choice, and hope you're looking forward to it. That and uh, I hope that you guys have a wonderful day and uh, blessings to all of you guys out there. And just um, you know, just uh, stand strong and. Uh, I'll see you in the next episode, episode 48. Peace.